Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So yesterday's video was rather popular on the bet that Elon Musk is making with Tesla and his other companies as well. And I actually got into an interesting email conversation with Jeff Shelley, who's a Patreon patron and also writes for Inside EVs. So you might actually find some of this on Inside EVs as well. But I thought I'd do a quick follow-up. I will put a card to the original episode at the end of this episode so that if you want to, you can go, of course, check that one out if you haven't seen that one yet. But anyway, this is one of the triumvirate of things that I was talking about but I'm going to focus specifically on robo-taxi today. So anyway, I laid out my case that robo-taxis are going to be incredibly disruptive to the transportation around the world and car purchasing and things like that. And, and you know, part of the whole thing was that basically this is an industry that's ripe for disruption and the fastest way to trans transition to sustainable energy for the globe is to reduce the number of cars in the world. And the way to do that is to not have people own cars. So anyway, uh, you know, Jeff, he hit me back with some really interesting points and, you know, some good thoughts. And so I'm going to like, you know, talk a little bit about what he said, obviously credit to him for all of this stuff, and then go on to my response. I've got my laptop here so I can get approximately correct on what he was saying. So he starts off with the core question is how many robo taxis does the world actually need and what is their saturation point? In other words, effectively, what is a total addressable market? Uh, it sounds like he comes from a marketing background. So he's got that kind of like, you know, thinking. So you're thinking, what's the TAM? What's the TAM? Um, so, it, you know, the question is how many people will actually replace their owned vehicle by using a robo taxi because obviously you won't be owning a robo taxi so the interesting part and he talks about how he purchased a, a dodge caravan for substantially less than the retail value of the car the original retail value of the car and so his total per mile cost is more like 30 35 cents per mile rather than the average 72 cents per mile in the United States. And so he's saying it's going to be really difficult to compete with that. And also he's like, I don't really particularly want to replace this car with a robo taxi. I would rather continue to own the car. So, you know, he's saying, of course, anecdotal, obviously. Um, and, but, but, you know, but it is reasonable. It is something that I think about even, cause I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm hesitant to just go like, oh, hey, let's just, you know, throw away our cars and go with this other solution that it, it's, it's problematic because, of course, I grew up my entire life, somebody has owned a car, my parents or myself or something like that. So it's not like this has ever been the case before. So we're looking at a brave new world here. So, um, you know, as, as he notes, and, you know, fully I agree with this, is that Henry Ford, there's a famous quote that he said, if you ask people what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. So, right, you can't just ask people. He's saying this is a bet from, on Tesla's part and Elon Musk's part. You can't just go out and do focus group studies and say like, hey, what do you guys want? Because nobody actually knows what they want. Or uh, Steve Jobs would always quote Wayne Gretzky saying like, I skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it is, right? So, you know, you have to think about where the future is heading, not what, if you ask people right now, most of them, including me who thinks about this a lot, I'm a little uncomfortable with the idea of giving up my cars. So you can't ask people that because if you told people, uh, you know, in in 2003 or something like that, that they would give up their chiclet keyboard like phones for something that didn't have a keyboard and was just a slab. Everybody would say, no, hell no, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Right. And yet there are no, I'm recording this on my phone. That's a slab that doesn't have any chiclet keys anymore. So, you know, you don't ask people what they want in these major disruptive sort of movements. You figure it out yourself. So anyway, he, he talks about, you know, there's no precedent to this and we really don't know what's going to happen. And it is, it's a huge bet because there could be a societal pushback against this too. So just beyond the technological aspect, there could be a societal pushback. I don't think that would last forever because if the economics are very clear, then it's going to have to happen just because of the economies that are involved. But there could be a, a difficult period in between. Okay. So anyway, you know, so that was his point and I'm condensing this a whole bunch. And like he's, like I said, he said he might go actually submit this to inside EVs and maybe my response will be there too. So anyway, we'll get a multimedia kind of thing. We'll get video and, and text. So definitely check that out if you're interested and, and pay attention to that. Okay. So anyway, my response basically <clears throat> was the same thing. You can't ask people what they want because they don't know what they want. Uh, on, on the effects front, I said, I think that lower income people are actually going to, he was saying lower income people 
would are, are you know are making it in a better way by using used vehicles than they would be doing this and i agree with him now but i think that my point is, is pretty valid here which is that lower income people are going to uh, benefit most from this in the short term and and my son drives uber i drive drove uber for a while just mostly because I wanted to give him this bonus that he would get if he got it. But I, I drove it enough <clears throat> to realize that while I kind of thought people used Uber more like I did, which was you go on vacation, you go someplace out of town, or you go to a bar and you take Uber home because it's a convenient thing. A lot of people use it to go to work, to go to the grocery store. They can't afford the upfront cost of a car. Even if it's a used car and it's ten or fifteen thousand dollars, you have to come up with that money, and or you have to be approved for a loan, and you also have to pay for insurance, and you have to pay for gas. So even if, let's say, you could do that for fifty cents a mile, ultimately, and Uber's going to cost you a dollar, a dollar fifty a mile, so it's clearly in your best interest, economically speaking, to go with the cheaper solution. If you can't get that car in the first place, if you don't have the upfront costs or upfront funds available or upfront credit to make that happen, you don't have a choice. You go with that. So this would be absolutely revolutionary for people who are in a lower income bracket and are struggling and they would be the first ones to adopt this. Could you imagine? I mean, how much more money do you have if you're working for minimum wage or 12 or $13 an hour or something and suddenly your cost for your rides, even at the beginning with RoboTaxi, right? Even if it's not down to its ostensible like 20 or 30 cents per mile eventually, even if it's like 70 cents or 60 cents a mile as opposed to well over a dollar a mile. So you're cutting the transportation cost in half and it's also potentially more convenient because you're not waiting around for drivers because there can be more of these robo taxis on the road. So <clears throat> I think that that's the group of people who will adopt it the most aggressively and first because there will be a huge economic impact to a group of people who doesn't have extra means and is not doing this for fun. They're doing it because they have to do it. And I think that would be the group of people who will be, who will attack this first and will definitely jump on board that immediately. Right? So anyway, that I think that that actually could save them a ton of money and they, they will definitely be the first ones. Okay. Then <clears throat> the, the, then folks outside the United States, and I'm thinking particularly of the European union at this point would also be a good, like not the initial market, but probably secondarily or happening at the same time. All of this stuff is going to be like a just a big giant, <laughs> you know, hodgepodge. I'm not saying one thing will happen, then the next will happen, then the next will happen, but they'll probably all happen at the same time. But anyway, in Europe, people don't have nearly the romance of owning a car as in the United States. They are much more practical. And they're like, if I can do public transportation and it costs me less than owning a car, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and I think that that will happen in spades with robo taxis. If it can be competitive with the cost of public transportation, but you get your own private vehicle, there's going to be a big advantage. So people will be very happy, especially in the European Union kind of area, to move away from owning a car and more towards just using a car. The third a uh, group of people, of course, is going to be urban dwellers or very close to urban dwellers. Currently, if you own a car in New York City, I just know well because my son lives there. But if you own a car there, you have to, it costs money to park it or you have to find space on the street, which is a pain in the, in the butt. <laughs> or you have to circle around, you have to switch sides when they're doing street cleaning on the other side. It can be difficult to find a fueling station, a gas station, and or an EV charging station. And by the way, we're going to be going to uh, New Jersey and New York gosh, in less than a month now, and we're going to take the Tesla and we're going to see, because we're going to stay in Brooklyn, and we're going to see how difficult it is to charge up there. So that'll be an interesting experiment. So stay tuned for that. Definitely subscribe if you want to check that out. But anyway, so I think that will be another group of people <clears throat> who will aggressively transition because that lowers a lot of costs, right? They might have a car that they use to go away for the weekends or something or whatever, and it costs a ton of money to garage it or to keep it on the streets and people, you know, bash into it with their doors and things. So the car gets beat up, it's very cost ineffective, and this would be another group of people who already take public transportation and everything. And then, uh, you know, I think to some extent that that uh, China is a bit of a wild card in this whole thing because China, like the U.S., really loves the status of owning a car. So I'm not exactly sure, but they're also really into tech. So <laughs> I could see them doing what I'm going to just now talk about with with urban, suburban uh, U.S. Dwell people. So... 
Again, I don't know the China market that well, but I think that they'll probably maybe follow the same approximate path. And that is that, you know, we can afford a couple of cars. We have a garage. We can charge very easily. All of that stuff is within the realm of economic possibility, but it isn't fun to pay a lot of money for a vehicle, to own it, to drive it, to garage it, all of that kind of stuff. So... We currently have two cars that we own, and then our son owns a third, and he lives here, so kind of have three cars that we own here, but let's just say two. So instead of two cars, there's absolutely no reason why we could not get away with one car and just having a robo-taxi. So if a robo-taxi could show up within, say, five minutes of when I would request it, and it could take me to work or to the gym or take my son to school or whatever, things like that, there's absolutely no reason why we need two cars. So, so multi-car households would have a high likelihood of dropping down a car or two, right? Depending on how many cars people own. Again, the United States is particularly reticent to do that. I think people are very much like, I own a car, this is my thing. It's a status symbol, you know, people, I mean, why, why the heck do people buy things like BMWs and Mercedes, which by the way, I think is a completely idiotic thing to do at this point when you have a Tesla. And you could lump Tesla into this because it's expensive, but the Tesla actually is much cheaper to own over the long haul. And, and it's also buying the future. But anyway, that's a whole different topic of conversation. But anyway, people love their status symbols and they love their trucks and their cars and things like that. But I do think that the economics would dictate that people would start to really think about purchasing a new car as opposed to taking a much cheaper robo taxi and and reducing the number of cars that they have. And they would find, wow, I save a ton of money because insurance, cost of ownership, you know, financing whatever, fueling it up, what I, all of those things would be reduced. So that would be a really interesting aspect of this. I think it'll be difficult. I think rural United States is, is unlikely to change, right? The economics just don't dictate it properly. And also a lot of people use things like trucks and stuff like that for actual work. And so they probably will want to own it. So I think like places like the rural United States and maybe rural areas in the rest of the world. That's a hard word to say, rural. <laughs> I remember a 30 Rock episode about that. But anyway, uh, you know, so I think that that would be the last to go and probably doesn't even necessarily need to go. But again, we're talking about overall things that are happening. So consequences of this. The consequences of this is that I believe what's going to happen to the automotive market is that eventually, and I'm talking 10 to 15 years here, it's going to become a niche sales market. And I talked about how other vehicle manufacturers, and I should put a link to that as well, are doing the reverse Tesla curve, which is they're going from mass market cars to higher profit, lower volume cars to eventually very high profit, very low volume cars. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to go backwards from Tesla doing the Roadster to the Model S to the Model 3 and going more mass market. So they're going backwards. So it seems like that's what's going to happen is that Tesla, for example, would sell the Model S, the Model X, and the Cybertruck to consumers. They would no longer sell the Model 3 or the Model Y. They would have their robo-taxi thing. You know, BMW, Toyota, whoever's still in business, probably not General Motors anymore, maybe Ford, uh, they will, what they'll do is they'll turn to mostly specialized things like trucks that people use for work and more premium market vehicles that people who just want to own a car for a status symbol can afford to do that. And these cars are gonna become much more expensive because the opportunity cost for these factories is they could be cranking out cheap robo taxis that they're making two or $300,000 over the lifetime of these things. Whereas, uh, you know, if you sell a car, you only make a one-time profit. And so if you sell like a Model S or something for $100,000 and you only make $15,000, that's a stupid deal versus you know, drive making these cars where you can make a hundred multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars over the life of the vehicle. So I think what they'll do is they'll raise the price to maybe 150 or something, or even even if the cost of manufacturing these things is substantially lower, like 70 or $80,000, they'll double the price because they're like, why else would I bother making this thing unless I was making a really good profit because I could make these other things that make a whole lot more money. So anyway, I predict that that's what's going to happen is that the market eventually will shrink. And again, not talking short term, we're talking a decade plus out, that the market for vehicles will shrink. There still will be vehicles that people will be able to purchase. <clears throat> oh gosh, I hate when it does that. <laughs> Sorry. It goes back after a while. It resets itself. Anyway, I'm sitting in my car for too long. So anyway, the, the vehicle market will shrink. It will reduce itself down 
to high profit, low volume vehicles. And that the volume vehicles that are being pumped out will be these less expensive, very indestructible robo taxi type vehicles that don't require a driver, don't even have things like a steering wheel that's in the way of my video shot right here. You know, you won't have that kind of stuff and people won't really want it anymore. So it's going to take a generation for that to become comfortable for people. But again, I think you know, Europe will be a good first place. Urban environments, eventually that will spread out to suburban environments. And, and, and then it'll, I don't know what happens with people who are, who are farming and doing work that actually need vehicles. I think that they will still have to own those vehicles. That's the likely outcome. But the, the vehicle market could shrink from approximately, I think it's 85 or 90 million vehicles were sold last year to 20 to 25 million vehicles by 2030 something, say 2032 or 2033, something like that. So that at the same time that Tesla is ramping to be able to create 20 million plus vehicles per year, the market for those vehicles is going to collapse and it's going to come down so that Tesla would be able to manufacture the bulk, like 80% of the world's vehicles because nobody needs more cars at that point. And that the rest of that, the other 20% is premium vehicles for people who just want to have the status symbol of owning a vehicle at that point. So anyway, those are my thoughts. It's speculation time. <laughs> I wore this shirt on purpose. You can get this at the merch store. The link's in the description. But anyway, I think it's really valuable to think about this stuff. Totally speculation, but it's really worth examining the future and what might be. I hope you find this interesting. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. Definitely let me know what you think, even if you think me and Jeff are totally nuts. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, that's never going to happen. Whatever. This thing will be around for a long time. We can check back in eight or 10 years and see how things are going at that point. All right. Anyway, I hope you're having a lovely Saturday. I will talk to you all again real soon. Bye-bye.